As Arkansas's population grows, so do our energy demands. But with the right mix of resources, reliable, affordable power will always be a reality. These resources are all around us, in our rivers, blowing through our trees, even right below our feet. The answer isn't focusing on one resource, it's embracing them all. The electric cooperatives of Arkansas know that a balanced approach to power builds our communities and powers our dreams. Visit themixmatters.com and see why there's power in knowledge. This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. And the big story this week revolved around the issue of same-sex marriage. A week ago, Friday, Pulaski County Judge Chris Piazza ruled the state's ban on same-sex marriage was unconstitutional. Jubilation for gay couples, a firestorm of pushback from conservatives. Long lines at the county courthouse calls for Piazza's impeachment by Weeks in, the controversy was still swirling as a state appeal of the decision was still up in the air with the Arkansas Supreme Court. Joining me to talk politics is the Arkansas Speaker of the House, Davey Carter. We appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank Glad you so here. much for being here. I guess first questions first, and I, did Judge Piazza get the ruling right? Well, that's for, and I've been consistent on this from the moment it came out. I mean, that's for our appellate court system to determine. I mean, I'm disappointed that he that he did it on Friday afternoon and, and didn't stay the, the ruling and because there was just a little chaos there. Right. Um, but, you know, calls for his impeachment uh, and these things and the, these reactions, airy uh, statements and those type of things, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't agree with. I mean, I'm a believer in our uh, three system, you know, of, of government and I'm a believer in the judicial branch of government and ultimately that question will have to be answered by the high courts and uh, you know I believe in our system that that's the system of self-governing governing that we've had for hundreds of years and uh, we, we have to we have to let let that play its course and you did talk about there was immediate talk of impeaching uh, Judge Piazza on that you came out very strongly with a statement uh, last week uh, you basically said that's just not going to happen that's a slippery slope that's why we have separation of powers that's the most absurd thing I've ever heard of. Uh, on Friday afternoon, or on Friday morning, there was a push in the Arkansas Legislative Council uh, to try to move a resolution forward to, to deal with potential impeachment. You voted against that resolution. Uh, you know, the resolution had some other things in there, not necessarily uh, dealing with impeachment. But, you know, the, the end of the, the, the whole story is here that, you know, that constitutional question, whether you like it or not, uh, has to be answered. Uh, at the, at the Supreme Court. And I think this decision will go to the Arkansas Supreme Court. And I think there's a very good chance that this case, this particular case, will go to the United States Supreme Court. And, and you know, we live in the United States of America and we have, we have men and women that have, you know, that have died in, in many wars fighting for our country and the way we live. And that's, that's what governs um, uh, our society. And we have to have faith in the court system and ultimately, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced and unwavering that that decision needs to be made there. Now, but there is in the Arkansas mm -hmm. State Constitution a provision mm -hmm. for removing judges as well as other constitutional officers right. from office. There is a process for that. You have as many as 50 members of the Arkansas General Assembly that, that have signed on to this petition to explore that as an option. How do you give them their due uh, and how do you deal with that as Speaker of the House? Every member's got a right to file and pursue whatever uh, policy things that they he or she wants to do, and I'm not here to impede that. I just made, make it well known that I'm I'm, I'm going to fight it. Uh, it. It's not. It will have. There's no significance on the outcome of the issue at hand. I mean, it's, it's irrelevant. It would take place, you know, m months away. I mean, maybe even perhaps after the Supreme Court rules. I mean, what happens if the Supreme Court upholds? We're going to impeach the Supreme Court judges. I mean, it's just a slippery slope. It doesn't matter that it's this, this uh, subject matter. It could have been on uh, domestic relations, child custody, or whatever. When you get the General Assembly that they don't like decisions of the judicial branch, and, and you go and try to impeaching them, that is an absolute slippery slope and I stand behind that. But your issue is that we should let the separation of powers work as it's intended to. It's not right. that you necessarily agree or disagree with the, the judicial decision itself. I, the right avenue to make this constitutional uh, holding is 
is the, ultimately it's going to be the United States Supreme Court. And the question is, does our state constitution, you know, run amok of the United States Constitution? Davy Carter can't answer that question. Roby Brock can't answer that question. Uh, it, it's going to have to go to the United States Supreme Court. And we live here. We live in a civilized society, and that's the way we self-govern. And we have to have faith in the system that our forefathers have, um, have set up so long ago. Let's shift gears. Let's talk about another potential issue, big legislative issue, a teacher insurance fix. There was a special session last year to deal with uh, some shortcomings in the teacher insurance mm -hmm. fund. Uh, new report out from the task force that has some recommendations. Will there be another special session to deal with teacher insurance? I met with Representative Harold Copenhaver, who I put on the uh, task force and who's the House chair along with uh, Senator Hendren. I did not meet with Senator Hendren today. Got a great report from Harold. Uh, I would say that has worked exactly like we have planned it to work. Uh, we had a problem. We funded it. We put them together to make changes. And we told everybody there's going to be changes. This cannot be sustainable. Yes, I'm going to call the governor, uh, you know, probably tomorrow. My recommendation is we have a special session. I think we have to do it. Those men and women on that committee have done an outstanding job, and we are not at, a, at the state level going to be able to or have any desire or want to to continue to fund thirty, forty, fifty million dollars on these shortcomings. And the if we don't do anything, uh, you know, it's seventy million. Uh, you know, they're already in 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 the in the, in the hole. Mm -hmm. And these recommendations, they're going to be. Uh, there may be some heartburn about them. But at the end of the day, we've got to make that uh, plan process sustainable, and, and they work together in a bipartisan way. We're going, I'm going to ask the governor to have a special session. I hope he takes us up on that. I, I know he will uh, because it's, you know, it's, it's, the state's going to have to get our arms around and make these changes before August, before all these plans uh, start going into effect. And if the legislature is in a special session, they will be convened and they could act on these articles of impeachment if they want to. Could they not? Uh, that, that could be a possibility. I'm just, I'm, I'm hopeful that that angst is going to die down. You know, whatever, I mean, look, there's no questioning this is a, a controversial issue. You know, they need to be focused on the things that uh, can affect the outcome. That has zero effect on the outcome, and it's, you know, the outweigh with that with the slippery slope on the things that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, an unwise thing to do, and I'm, I'm going to oppose that. Uh, let's talk about this past week, some kind of preliminary numbers from hospital administrators around the state talking about the number of uninsured patients coming into their ERs. Um, do you see that those statistics, those numbers that were presented, basically a 24% decline, uh, in uninsured patients coming to the ERs. Interesting statistics to you, or do you see a correlation between that and the private option? Absolute uh, correlation. I mean, that, that's, um, there's no denying that that's had, uh, already started to have an effect on, on the, uh, how the uninsured gets access to health care. And, you know, it was, it was, it's good to see it in writing, and it's good to hear that testimony. And, you know, when you start, when you, when you put together policy like that from scratch, and, and you know, there, there are things out there that you think and you analyze and you make the best decisions. But you know, when the data starts coming back in uh, to, to back that up, it make, it, it, it's, it's a good feeling. So I think we're absolutely headed in the right direction. Uh, nobody said this was going to be perfect from the start. Mm -hmm. uh, and I fully expect this to be tweaked uh, along the way. And whatever that means, tweaked along the way, I don't know. But it was good to see and it, and it made it backed up what all everybody thought about how people were going to behave differently when they didn't have any insurance or they have insurance policy and so I think that backed that up. Yeah backed I think too up. another interesting statistic that came out and it wasn't as dramatic as that 24 percent decline in uninsured but it was a two percent decline in emergency room visits. Why is that decline in emergency room visits so significant? Well, it's expensive, number one, and it's gone uncompensated, uh, number two, uh, from the hospitals. And, and that cost had been absorbed in other ways in years past. And mm -hmm. so you had people that, when they have no other access to health care, you know, they're going to get treated, and we all want them to be treated. And but we don't have any money, or if we don't have any insurance. You know, you're going to use whatever avenues that makes the best sense for your family. And a lot of times that means going to the emergency room because you know you're going to get treated uh, whether you have any way to pay for it or not. So, you know, but I bet you, you would ask, you know, 10 of those people that do that, 
or have done that, they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to go to the doctor before it gets to that point. They right. don't want to have to go to the emergency room for some other things. So, you know, I think it's that change in behavior, the way people take care of their personal health care needs when they have access to health insurance. So I think it was positive. I hope it continues to be positive. And it, everybody, and I say everybody, the users uh, of the insurance and, you know, we, everybody's going to have to come together and be smart about how, how this works uh, because, you know, it's, that's the only way it's going to work if we, if, 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 if behavior's changed and, 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 you know, this population uh, continues to move in that direction. Private option's been a big issue in a lot of Republican mm -hmm. primaries, particularly the legislative Republican primaries. We've seen it play out in some state Senate races, obviously mm -hmm. some House races. Um, do you think some folks win that voted for the private option, some folks lose that voted for the private option, or do you think that we will see something pretty clear in terms of it did not become this divisive issue that uh, people maybe thought it could be? Well, first off, I mean, I can't express my any more disappointment that that, is, that has become the litmus test in, in these primaries. I think it's, uh, I mean, I just think that's a bad thing. And I don't think there's any denying that that has become the litmus test in the primaries. So I'm hopeful that the candidates who have, that are running in these primaries that didn't take the easy stance and just hold up a sign that says, I don't like Obamacare, I don't like President Obama, or whatever. I mean, I've heard, if I hear Obamacare one more time, I'm, you know, I mean, I, if we need a dollar in a bucket, we would all be rich just to hear. I mean, it, it, I, think, I think that's, that's, that's People are tired of hearing it, and um, so I hope these candidates who've had courage to just do what's best for the people of Arkansas, notwithstanding all of that uh, rigmarole there, uh, John Burris, Duncan Baird, Andrea Lee, I mean, on and on and on, mm -hmm. um, knowing you're not going to take the easy road just to try to get elected uh, and just try to do the right thing for the people, I'm going to be... I'm optimistic that those people are going to be rewarded. Voters in Arkansas are smart. They cut through all that stuff. And, um, you know, I want to see them get over the finish line. I think they will. And I think that will be very telling on how the political party moves forward in the coming years. So we'll see, I guess, two days, right? That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's so. right, Tuesday night. So uh, I'm kind of hearing you making some political predictions mm -hmm. here. Or were those endorsements? Were those political predictions? Wait, give me some predictions for Tuesday night. Give me uh, an upset special or something that uh, you say I can take to the bank, since you're a banker. Well, I'll make some predictions. Uh, you know, I, I think, I don't know where we start. I mean, I, I think the Republican primary, I think ACE is a shoe in. I mean, I don't, I think the, the question is if, if you, how much the other guys get. I mean, is it Any regrets that you didn't jump in that governor's race? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Lieutenant uh, governor. Lieutenant governor. Griffin wins handily. Uh, I think, uh, I love Andy Mayberry. I think he's a great guy. He, you know, in other circumstances, he, you know, you never know. Andy's a great guy, great name, and yeah. um, he would do well. Both of those guys would do a great job in that office, but Tim will win. I think French Hill wins. I love Ann. Ann's Anne's a colleague of mine. I've supported Ann I mean, just because she's a friend, and I think she would do great too. I just think French is going to win. Yeah. Um, what about down in the fourth district? Fourth Western district. I think uh, Westerman wins. I met Tommy Mole the first time, um, a few, well, a month or so ago, and he seems like a really sharp guy. A uh, really sharp guy. I think his ads kind of backfired a little bit on him, and you know, I'm I like to call it like it is, whether it's good or bad, and you know, I think anybody that knows Bruce. Um, they know he didn't support <laughs> right. private options. I, right. mean, I mean, I fought with Bruce for, <laughs> you know, a month so or, or longer. So I mean, I, I think that may be, may have backfired a little bit on him. Uh, but I think uh, I think Duncan wins. Uh, In the treasurer's a, race. Treasurer's race. Auditor's Duncan Baird, race. Andrea Lee. I think she wins. You know, the big Senate race. My friend John Burris, and you know, I think he, I think he wins. It may. I don't know if he has to do do a runoff or not. I'm not real sure. But I just want people like that. That that aren't going to represent the extreme side of a party, whether that's Republican or Democrat. I will tell you, people are tired of it. People are tired of all this mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, by the time November gets here, I mean, I, we're all going to have to have a, you know, a check our sanity <laughs> for, for some of the stuff that's going on. I just think it's just a little bit of overplay, and these people that I, I think are going to win. I mean, take Duncan. I mean, look, we're all friends, and everybody knows why I'm, you know, a lot of reasons why I'm supporting him, but 
there is not a more professional, qualified, do right person, you know, in my opinion, uh, out there. And we have to have people like that in office that represents everybody, yeah. not just the, you know, the, the folks on the extreme. So it's going to be telling. I think it will be di directional for the Republican Party going forward. And I will tell you that I am personally anxious to, to see how this works out. I, I feel, um, I mean, the, the, that, that's, I, I, I love them. I mean, and they're, the, the, those people that I mentioned, and um, I want them to do well, and I hope they, I hope they get rewarded with the victory Tuesday.